Recently, I took on Unbound 200, arguably the biggest gravel race in the world. Alchemy set me up with a gravel bike, Reynolds hooked me up with their top spec gravel wheels, and Redshift saved my arms with their suspension stem. Your kit at this race takes an absolute beating, as you can see. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a proper deep dive into everything I used to get my sorry ass to the finish line. The bike I used is Alchemy's Lycos gravel bike. Alchemy are based out of Colorado and they're known for their custom handmade carbon and titanium frames. The Lycos is actually their first production model, which brings all that quality to a slightly cheaper price point. And it comes in five sizes. I went for the XXL, obviously. <laughs> you can also get customized paint jobs, which is, um, Quite hard to see on this one. I've got the, the Unbound customized paint job, I think. But if we flash back a little bit, you can see what this beautiful bike looks like underneath all that mud. The frame is made from what Alchemy call their premium factory carbon, which they say has been perfected over the years via their in-house frame building processes to be light, strong and reliable. It's got clearance for 50mm tyres, a slacker head tube angle and a gravel orientated geometry, which Alchemy say absorbs all the shocks and bumps that gravel roads throw at you. And it's bomb proof too, because this frame set is backed up by a lifetime warranty. The Lycos has got plenty of extra mount points, so you've got fender mounts at the back and the front, plus loads of mount points on the forks if you're gonna go on an epic bike packing trip. Mounts on the top tube too for the bag, which I used during Unbound 200. Plus there's internal cable routing and I've got Enduro bearings in the bottom bracket. These are Enduro XD15 bearings. They're a hybrid ceramic, super long lasting due to the way Enduro makes them. All the benefits of ceramic stuff. They also come with a lifetime warranty, which is pretty insane. I opted for a SRAM group set, one by at the front, 40 tooth with 10 42 at the back. And I felt my gearing was spot on from bound actually. I was never over or under geared, always had what I needed, whether that be a tailwind section super fast or one of the steep climbs, which are present here in Kansas, you wouldn't expect it. The bike also has a SRAM UDH hanger. Frame set starts at 3299 US dollars and you can pick up a full build starting from 4999 US dollars too. And I've got to say, I never put a foot wrong over the race. I didn't have any issues, which I feel pretty lucky with, because if I did, I'd have been in trouble. It was hard enough without any mechanicals, and I've almost felt like I've bonded with the bike. I don't want to clean it. It's going to be hard to clean. It almost feels like I'm washing away the experience. I paired the bike with Reynolds Black Label All-Terrain Road or ATR wheels. Now these come with a 32mm external rim width and a 40mm deep rim and they can accommodate anything from 28mm to 45mm tyres. So basically they're designed to be ridden on anything from road to gravel and they're light and fast for the job too. Plus they're robust because wheel sets are built totally in-house and come with a lifetime rim guarantee. The wheel set weighs 1,526 grams. The hub is manufactured by Industry 9, which Reynolds say provides quick engagement and efficient transfer of power. I opted for 45 mil with tires, Pirelli RCs, and I thought that the wider, the better here, and that's what these wheel sets are designed to do. They're designed to accommodate wider volume tires, allowing for all those benefits such as comfort, control, and increased traction, which is so important when the going gets rough, especially around here in Kansas. I put inserts in, a ton of sealant, and pressure-wise, I went a little bit higher than I was kind of expecting and planning to. Originally, I was thinking about 30, 35 PSI. I actually went for 40 PSI after speaking to defending champion Ivar Slick, because he said if you go higher pressure and you puncture and it seals, you can still keep on rolling with a good enough pressure to not have to stop and then reinflate the tire. Handlebar wise, I use Redshift's kitchen sink handlebars. Now these have seven degrees of sweep and 25 degrees of flare, allowing for a really wide 
comfortable position when you're on the drops, which felt super safe and secure, especially when you're going down some of those descents. It actually allowed me to get a bit of recovery on the descents because I wasn't having to concentrate or be you know, super focused on the effort as much. I could really enjoy that descent, get a bit of comfort and recovery in before taking on the next climb. They've got 20 mil of rise on the tops as well, so comfortable when you're sitting there on the tops. I paired these with Redshift Shockstop Pro Suspension Stem, which has 20 mil of tunable travel, thanks to five different elastomers, which you can fit yourself into the stem and customize that travel depending on what your riding style is. Personally, I found this to be a real lifesaver actually in Unbound because it's so rough that if you get, let it get the better of you, your upper body just gets so tight and fatigued that later on in the race, I think I'd have really experienced some, some super muscle fatigue and that could have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But compared to my FKT attempts that I did recently when my arms and my upper body were just shot, in Unbound, I actually felt quite relaxed towards the end of the race there. So I was able to just focus on the suffering in my legs and pushing forward and willing myself to the finish line. So yeah, I was super grateful for that stem. Definitely worked in my favor. There's two versions of this stem, the Shock Stop and the Shock Stop Pro suspension stem. I went for the Pro version, which has 15% less weight thanks to some titanium hardware and some weight reducing CNC machining. Coming sizes range from 80 to 120 mil too. And I opted, of course, for the larger size, the 120 mil. A few other little bits about what I was carrying on my bike. So I went for two small toppy lights. I quite like this front one because you can kind of switch it about in your position depending on what happens. When you do these epic long rides, you're kind of not really quite sure what's gonna happen, what you're gonna be carrying on your bike. And I liked having this one to, to put wherever you wanted. Maybe I was a little bit lacking in a stronger light. I wasn't expecting to be going quite so long into the night. I thought it would maybe just be, I'd be riding into the sunset. So that was a, maybe a little bit of mispreparation on my part. Perhaps should have had one with a stronger battery life, but this did the job. It was still high volume, still going strong when I got to the finish line. Bag-wise, they're top peak. So I went for a top tube bag for easy access to food and also had gas canisters in there just so I could really whip in there with a plug kit get straight to the tires without any faffing around if anything happened with punctures, which actually didn't. I had one puncture which self-sealed and it had a ton of sealant in there, which Silka actually topped up with some replenisher just before the race. So I was really grateful for that. I went with a Wahoo Roam as my head unit. Um, so 17 hours plus riding time and I still had 44% battery left by the end. I went with a backlight on with a five second timer so it would go off and not waste any battery life because you really don't want your maps to run out when you're getting towards the end of these things. Bottles, I went for two one litre bottles, um, which you can actually get in GCN's shop. Uh, I just want to take as much liquid, as much as I possibly could, because there's some really long stints in this race where you can't take anything. Saddle, I've got a Sella Italia Novus Evo Endurance in a wide version, but big old hips. So back at base, a few other bits aside from the bike that I needed to take with me and think about for Unbound. So use a rucksack. This is Camelback Chase rucksack. So you've got a hydration pack in there which carries a litre and a half of water. Filled it up purely with water and that got me to the first checkpoint where I topped it up there after 87 miles. I also use it to carry my phone inside a waterproof wallet. Bit of money spare in there just in case of emergencies and obviously really do need a phone at this event. If things go wrong, you need a way of contacting people to come pick you up. And also, it's pretty handy for having little pockets here where you can put food and zip things up. So I had a few gels in there and a bar, kind of easy access. You don't have to reach back to your pockets and uh, risk taking your hands off the bars. Food-wise, I was going with SIS, so beta fuel, which I had tested a good bit before and really um, found it useful. I'd up to the carb intake about 150 grams an hour not sure if I quite managed that in Unbound because things are just so crazy at the start with the mud. I actually forgot to eat the first two hours or kind of couldn't, but I was trying to get down as much of that as I could. So the chews, also plenty of the gels, pack around 40 grams of carbs in a gel, about 46 grams for the chews. And I also had two bidons, two bottles, depending on where you're from in the world, filled with mix, 80 grams, one sachet of mix, about 80 grams in each bottle. And on the subject of bottles as well, actually, I used a bit of duct tape taped around the bottles, then turned the duct tape inside out, so the sticky bits on the outside 
Then when I went into the, uh, the bottle cages, I, I felt that would keep them in there a little bit better because I was a bit nervous about, about dropping the bottles on the really rough stuff because um, that would have been an absolute nightmare. So yeah, that's a bit of the nutrition, what I was carrying in my bags, kind of fuel up for such a long race. So I was kind of up in an hour in between using a saddle bag and just like strapping things to my frame. Um, in the end, I opted for a saddle bag because I found it was a little bit of a faff to like take things off the frame and then it got caked in mud as well. So I kind of wanted everything in here to be kept clean. Okay, I'm into my bag. So took with me, multi-tool with chain breaker, very important. Did have a little valve core remover in here as well. Also had a hand pump in case I ran out of gas canisters. I wrapped a good bit of duct tape around here as well, just for, just for anything really. Um, could have been used to try and get away with a big old slice in the tire, or maybe just wrap stuff up. So kind of two gas canisters there. Spare lot plugs for tires, in case it would run out. Last up, sort of tools which are in the checkpoint. So I had a spare tire. Um, she could have got to the, the pits with. Another spare hand pump, just in case. A few spare valves are there in the checkpoint. More duct tape, um, set tool, spare disc pads, spare chain, another spare tube. Um, this is pretty cool, love this. Um, so it's just kind of straps to your bike. You can put gas canisters in here or a bit of a item there and you literally just wrap it around the bike and it stays there just in case I need us to attach more, more stuff to the bike. Even more gas canisters and, well, chain loop, which it wasn't in there. <laughs> I forgot to pack it. But um, there you go, bit of a run through of all the kit that I used at Unbound. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, maybe thinking of taking the race on yourself, you're wondering what sort of stuff you should bring. I'll try and give you a bit of advice if I can. Um, I'm not sure there's a perfect formula. I think you kind of have to wing it to some extent, but definitely preparation, do a bit of research is key if you're thinking of coming in and taking it on or taking on any sort of really tough gravel ride yourself. Good luck if you are. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. That was Unbound. See you in the next video.